you know, it's, um, it, it's an amazing thing to walk with the Lord. And if, you've, if, you've, if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, then we can't explain it to you. You have to experience Him for yourself. Uh, you can sit in church and, and go to Bible studies and all that stuff, uh, and all that is fine, but it'll never get you there uh, because religion was never meant to take you to the Lord. Actually, sometimes religion takes you away from God. It's a substitute. It's a, a facade. And I think that the choir and Anne and, and everybody that's participating is, is really wanting to minister to the church and to encourage the church here in Fluvanna uh, because we all know, I mean, we watch the news, right? It's great to come out here and we have this night of encouragement, but tomorrow the sun rises again and we get back to our day. And we watch the news and we see you know, the, the, ep- the epidemic of opioid usage. And we see and we know what's going on in the news, what's going on in our country. And we know that Washington, D.C. isn't the hope. And we know that this isn't the hope. Right? That, there, there's no hope. There's, where is the hope outside of Jesus Christ? Because it's your, it's your heart... It's your home, it's the local church, it's your family, and it's God wanting to, again, break into this area through your life. He, he said, I'll, I'll come, I'm going to come into your heart, and then I'm going to work through you. That's pretty phenomenal. God chooses to use broken vessels to pour himself out through. Now, every time I get a chance to get up here, I, I sit in the back, and I listen, and I watch, and I always come kind of thinking, okay, Lord, what do you want to say tonight? And I never know, and it never fails. Right before the end, God says, okay, Steve, here's what I got for you. So, are you ready, church? Matthew chapter 14. It's a very, very familiar story, and I think you'll see why it fits in with our uh, topic and our subject for the night. Matthew 20, uh, 14, 22 says, Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat. And go before him to the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. And those are comforting words to so many people in the midst of those storms and those battles. Now, here's here's what I like. Verse 28 says, And Peter answered him, answered Jesus, and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. That's a pretty bold request. I think that's Peter saying, Lord, if that's you, I want to go deeper. Now, he's going to go deeper, but not in a way. (laughs) But that's what makes this story so relevant, right? He's saying, God, if that's you. I mean, how many of us have had that moment and you go like, Lord, is that you? Because we're just not great receptors sometimes to the things of God. All kinds of stuff in the way. All kinds of messages that get mixed up. And sometimes we go, Lord, is that you? Is that you? And I think Peter is saying that same thing. Lord, if that's you, then command me to come to you. Now, we know he's the only disciple that sank, but he's also the only disciple that got out of the boat. And I think this is the encouragement for the church. When's the last time you said, Lord, if that's you, command me to do this? Lord, if that's really you. I mean, maybe for some people here, you're going deeper still, but it's in the wrong direction. Deeper into addiction deeper into darkness, deeper into internet places where you shouldn't be. And you're going deeper, it's just in the wrong direction. I coached sports for a long time, and I learned this very valuable lesson. doesn't matter how fast you're running with the ball if you're going in the wrong direction. (laughs) But it's true. Some of you are running really fast toward success, running really fast uh, toward power. And and you're running in the wrong direction. You're wondering why it's not helping, why you're still not finding that satisfaction. You're still not finding your chains broken. Matter of fact, you're finding that the more you go, the farther you run, the faster you go, the less you feel full, the more empty you feel. 
the more shallow you feel. Do we live in a, in, a, in a place, in a time when there's a lot of shallowness? We know that. There's a lot of shallowness. Relationships are shallow. Communication is shallow. The media fills us with shallowness. Jesus is not shallow. God is not shallow. He is a depth that you will never, never fully comprehend. No matter how far you've gone with God, there's still deeper places to go with Him. And the real danger to the church is to become apathetic or stagnant or say, well, I'm, it's good enough. My walk with God, it's, I'm, I'm close enough now. And, and that just quenches the Spirit of God because the Spirit of God wants to take you deeper. Now, back to Peter. He says, Lord, if that's you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus doesn't say, I'm not sure I can do that. Uh, he says, simple, one word. Jesus says one word. And to you, whether you're saved or unsaved, whether you've been in church for 30 years or three minutes, well, you've been in here longer than three minutes. Maybe that one word is the word you need to hear tonight. That Jesus is saying to you, come. That's come and drink deeply from a fountain you'll never exhaust. To find a satisfaction you can't even believe exists. Or, it's to you who are the church, and you're just kind of going through the motions still. You're, you're, you're living the faith, you're living off the fuel, the, the fumes you had from 10 years ago. You're just going through the motions, and you've not trusted Jesus for anything new in your life. There's no new song in your heart. It's the same old thing, same soup, just heated up. And Jesus is saying to you, come, I'm not done with you yet. There's more work to be done, church. There's more souls, souls to be saved. There's more families that need healing. There's more children that need to know Jesus Christ. And he's saying to you, just like he said to Peter, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. We can criticize him all we want. And a lot of people never go deeper with God. Why? Because you're afraid to fail. Because what if? And it's so much easier just to sit in Sunday school and talk about how much we know about Jesus rather than ever actually putting anything we know into practice. Because we might sink. I might fail. And so you'll never actually walk on the water. You'll never actually have that experience. None of the other disciples were courageous enough to ask Jesus that. But for that moment, he was walking on the water. When Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid, and he began to sink and cried out, saying, Lord, save me. What a wonderful three-word prayer. So Peter, because he took his eyes off the Lord, as you know, he began to fear, and he began to go deeper still. <laughs> but that's part of it, isn't it, church? I mean, isn't that the glorious part of trusting in Jesus Christ that you put yourself in situations over your head? I mean, look around. I ain't got no edumacation. No certificates. I really, church, I'm telling you, I have no idea how to be a pastor. But I do have the Spirit of God living in my life and a calling. And, I, you, know, and, and you get in a place where you go, I am so over my head. I'm over my head not because I'm stupid or because I step out apart from God. Please don't do that. But sometimes you know God's calling you and you're afraid to fly. He's calling me over here, but I don't like planes. Get in a plane. But I, I don't like children. I don't know if I can do children. If God's calling you to it, then you can do it. God's calling is his, is his empowerment. So Peter, he gets afraid. He takes his eyes off Jesus onto the wind, onto the things, onto circumstances, and he begins to sink. But the good news is, is that, is Jesus going to let him drown? I mean, is, but see how many of you have said that. Jesus is going to let me drown. If you're walking with the Lord, then he works all things together for good to those that love him and are called according to his purposes. Listen, church, how many of you have, have experienced a time when you thought, oh no, how am I going to get out of this one? And Jesus was faithful, because you're sitting here tonight saying amen. amen. He won't let you drown. 
When he saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid, beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. How many of you understand Jesus' arm is never too short to reach out for someone who cries out to be saved? And immediately, not five minutes, not ten minutes, not a day, <laughs> I've been treading water, come on now. I wouldn't last that long. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got in the boat, the wind ceased. See, sometimes God sets you up in a test or a trial, and he lets you sink a little bit so that he can show you how awesome a Savior he is. He'll let you go down a little bit, but as soon as you cry out to him, he's right there immediately. Immediately. 